All right, good morning. Welcome back to another exciting adventure uh, for the glory of God and Kings. My name is Travis Finley, and I am your host as we read the Bible for the first time again. We are looking at the great topic of eschatology. Eschatology is a uh, combination of two Greek words, eschatos, meaning last, and ology coming from logos which refers to the study of last things and so eschatology is concerned with not the end of our world okay the bible is not about the end of yours and my existence the new testament is concerned with the end and we're going to see that in this uh, look at matthew 24 that the end is the end of their world, their uh, structure, and their social, religious, political, uh, cultural existence that was set up um, back in uh, the book of Exodus when they left Egypt and God formed a people for himself gave them his laws. All of that was the beginning of their childhood, in Israel's childhood. They began like Adam and Eve did in the garden, and they were expected to grow and mature so that when Christ did come, they would have been ready, and they would have understood the times, and they would have welcomed his kingdom. But because of the wickedness of the, of the human heart in uh, Israel's uh, existence, um, they corrupted the worship that God had originally structured for them, and their eyes were hardened, and their hearts were hardened, their eyes were scaled over, and they couldn't see. Now, some did. Uh, a great majority did, but for the most part, um, that was not the case. Okay. We're looking at the context in which we find Jesus' words in the Olivet Discourse. The Olivet Discourse is the key to understanding the rest of the Bible. Everything after the Olivet Discourse is all about the Olivet Discourse. Everything. Even the smallest little social issue that Paul deals with. It's within the context of the first century and what was going on, okay? Jesus has brought an indictment against the leaders of Israel. He said, you guys are going to have uh, the wrath of God rain down on your heads, unless you repent. If you come and follow me, take up your cross, and uh, walk in my ways, then you will be delivered. But if you don't, then you will be on the wrong side when it comes down to it, okay? All right, so I want you to pay attention to what we do here in the text because the way that I was raised to read this text blinded me from understanding what Jesus was saying in the context of Matthew 24, okay? So Jesus comes out of the temple and he was going away and his disciples came up to point out the temple's buildings to him. And he said, do you see all these things? I tell you the truth. Not one of these stones is going to remain upon another. They will all be torn down. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately and said, tell us when these things will happen. Okay, now, when you're reading the Bible and you wonder what this means, you need to probably stop and go back because usually within the immediate context, this tells you what this means. So when the disciples say, when will these things be? What are the these things that they are talking about? What are they? Well, the next, the, the very preceding idea is what Jesus says. Truly I say to you, Pharisees and scribes, all these things will come on this generation. All these things are basically the vengeance of blood coming down on Israel 
for her participation in the murder of all of the prophets and the righteous before um, before Christ came. Okay, so when will these things happen? Okay, now their next question is very interesting. When will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming? The disciples knew that Jesus was going to be the one to bring down the hammer on the enemies of God. Did you catch that? What is the sign of your coming? Now, the question is this. Do you know what the question is? You're coming to do what? You feel the weight of it? Their questions here are all the same question. So let me let me put a parenthesis in. When will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming to do these things? I am suggesting to you that's the natural way to take what is going on here in the conversation. So, we have a reference here in 24.3 of the coming of Jesus. I am going to suggest to you that if you start back at the uh, first chapter of Matthew and read all the way up into this point, you are going to read about the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of Man. They are all the same event. They are all the same event. You cannot justify making five of them one event and five of them another event. It won't work. It cannot work. I hope you can hear this. I hope you can see this. Okay? Now, when will these things be? What is the sign of your coming to do these things and the end of the age? Okay, that is the same question. What is the sign of your coming to do these things and what is the sign of the end of the age? Those are both together. They are not separate questions. The end of the age is going to be marked by Jesus' bringing vengeance on his enemies, which is apostate Israel primarily, and is the summary of all these things. Jesus is the avenger of blood. All these things. His coming is to um, adjudicate against his enemy and bring an end to that world. That's what the end of the age means. The end of the age, if we look through the Gospels, there's that age and the age to come. When Paul was writing about the age to come, it was still in the future for Paul because the end hadn't come yet. Okay? Now, hopefully you have all of these different firings in your head going, what about, what about, what about, what about? That's great. That's exactly what I want you to feel and do and go back to the scriptures and put these uh, things to the test. Okay? Okay? Jesus says, see that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will mislead many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see that you are not frightened for these things must take place. But that is not yet the end. Okay. The end, in my opinion, is always the same end. The end of the old covenant. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and land quakes. Famine and, famine and earthquakes. Now, when you read the book of Acts, and you read about famines, and you read about earthquakes, you don't remember this passage, but you need to. Okay? When you uh, read the book of Revelation, and you read about famines, and you read about earthquakes in the book of Revelation... You don't think about this passage, but you need to. The book of Revelation is the fulfillment of 
Matthew 24, and the book of Revelation was fulfilled 1946 years ago. Famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginning of the birth pangs. Here we go again. Ready? Now, Jesus just said in Matthew 23 to the scribes and the Pharisees, I am going to send my people to you, and you're going to kill them, you're going to crucify them, you're going to scourge them in your synagogues, and you're going to persecute them from city to city. Now, he well, okay, first he said that to the Pharisees. Now, he's saying it to his disciples. They will deliver you to tribulation. Thlupsis in the Greek. Okay? Tribulation. Affliction. Thlupsis. That word comes up again in the letter of the of First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians. Let me just jump over there real quick. Okay. If I can jump over there real quick. All right, ready? Okay, we don't do this. You you have to associate these things. Please, people, please. Listen, Second Thessalonians. Therefore, we apostles ourselves speak proudly among you of you among the churches, of your perseverance, that's what Jesus is going to call them to in Matthew 24, your perseverance and faith in the midst of your persecutions and afflictions. Philipsis. You have to associate these things. They're not isolated. Paul is saying everything that Jesus was talking about, your afflictions, your persecutions, they're happening. And then look what he says. It's just God will replay God will repay with affliction those who afflict you. That's what we're talking about in Matthew 24. Paul is saying to his audience comforting them in their experience that Jesus is going to avenge their affliction. Okay? All right. They will deliver you up to tribulation. They will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will fall away, many will betray one another, and hate one another. So this is what we see in the epistles. Okay, We see conflict between the followers of Christ and the Judaizers who are uh, in opposition to the message of the gospel. Many false prophets will arise and mislead many because of lawlessness, because lawlessness is increased, many people's love will grow cold but the one who endures to the end will be saved saved from what saved from what the wrath of god against his enemies for their participation in the innocent shedding of blood and the end of the age if you stay in the old age, you will be destroyed. You will be, you will perish. Okay, that's the language of the first century. This is not talking about hell. When it says, he who endures till the end will be saved, not from hell, from the wrath of God, which we see depicted in the book of Revelation, which is about the destruction of the old world order. Okay? Now, listen. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole empire as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. The problem with our translations is the Greek word translated world in 2414 is not cosmos. It's oikumene, which is a reference to the Greek, to the Roman Empire. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole empire as a testimony to all nations. Now, as we close, I just want to show you one thing that Paul recognized in his time. This is from Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, okay? Wow. So... It is here. I should just start reading instead of looking for it. Um, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. 
Your faith is being proclaimed. The gospel, your faith, the whole world. Okay, The events that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24 are past. They are fulfilled. Jesus came and did what he said he was going to come to do. And that is, he brought an end of the old, brought in the new, his kingdom. And in order to do that, he had to destroy his enemies, which he did. Okay? A lot of good stuff here. A lot of good stuff. Uh, my name is Travis Finley, and this is uh, For the Glory of God and Kings. And we are reading the Bible for the first time again. Please subscribe. Please ask lots of good questions regarding this stuff so that we can flesh it out and I can maybe take some time to look up your questions and uh, challenges and address them in the podcast. Okay, we'll see you next time.